Hello YouTube, today I have here a brand new brand from Russia, uh, from Mother Russia, our beloved neighbor. It's a Ural Sound TT series 15 inch subwoofer. Uh, what this brand has and uh, what kind of features this subwoofer, cheap sub subwoofer has. This is priced around 150 euros. It comes with beauty rings uh, from the magnet like so. And on the tops around here, oop, we have this kind of uh, rubber ring on there. So it's not plain as this, but uh, it might be taking this off just to check out the glues and everything deep inside the subwoofer. What do you think about the Ural Sound? Leave me a comment. What do you think about um, this brand anyhow? And what kind of cool stuff this brand has? This is brand new for me, so let's dig in. Uh, on, on later on this video, I will be checking uh, some uh, excursion of the subwoofer and some parameters of this individual subwoofer. Now the tops around here is a bit tough. It is actually, it is quite, um, not that thick, I thought it was thicker, but it's quite tough and it has this uh, nice um, rubbery glare on it. It's not fully foam, so it's kind of a more rubber than foam. It is quite stiff, uh, but really big and wide. And how wide it is actually, if I calculate from down here, it is around 48 millimeters in width. And in height, we are talking about around 22, maybe 23, a little bit up. Yes, about there, we are 24, 23, 24 millimeters. 23 millimeters and 48 millimeters. Really wide, good uh, tops around here. Pressed pepper cone, double stitching, plastic dust cap with a pistol logo on it. Now, what do you think about this logo? Having a pistol on your subwoofer is, uh, for my taste, it's kind of in uncanny valley. So it's like, it's a cool logo, but in a subwoofer, a pistol, what does it mean? What does the TT mean? Is it sharp sound or something? Don't know really, uh, but Let's find out the rest of the subwoofer and what do you think about the logo? Uh, leave me a comment in the comment section. Now the top surround is glued with a very tough, but even so slightly rubberized uh, glue. It is actually very, very um, rigid or stiff glue, but it flexes and bends. I have a small drop here that I try to peel off. So it actually, it just, wow, it really is really, really stuff glue here. It is flexible, but really stuff glue, really good glue for use uh, on the tops around. And it is quite wide, the bead here is quite wide. It goes quite heavily all around. You can actually, you don't see it because it has the ring on it and it's all uh, fully transparent. Now let's check if the glue stay, uh, holds. I'm putting my two fingers on this surround here and raising the subwoofer up. You can actually see it bends a little bit off the surround. It's it's actually that stiff that you can, it really does not deform on it. But you can easily uh, move your subwoofer by holding it directly from the top surround here. Now the excursion wise, uh, I managed to have it uh, bottom out by hand. So it is capable of bottoming out. The frame is so, uh, it's not that uh, long that you cannot bottom it out. You actually can, but it needs quite a lot of force. Now if I stretch it here, you can actually see that this top surround here does not deform, which is a good. And on here you can see the terminals. If I push, push this all the way down, it still leaves about two centimeters gap here, so these won't hit together, which is fine, really good. Now on the spiders down in here, you can see we have two push terminals, and the uh, tinsel leads are on the uh, spider there. The spider is quite heavy, uh, quite high uh, on the, all the sides, and on, on the... the down spider actually uh, here is uh, it's not like a hard and stiff like a competition spider it is uh, more like uh, 
rigid maybe or I'm, I'm trying to find a word for for the feelings of this surround here it feels like it's quite thick and with good flexibility it's really easy to bend but it feels like thick like this one uh, it feels that you need a force to move it it feels like very rigid and very uh, flexible at the same time really nice choice of spider down in here because it only has one spider or one spider back now the bottom spider or spider here is glued with really extremely hard glue it does not scratch so i think this is epoxy uh, two component epoxy perhaps been used here, which is a actually astonishingly good glue to use uh, the, It would be really hard to remove it uh, with the angle grinder. Yes, but uh, if you want to recount the subwoofer you will be having a bad time uh, the coil and the spider and the uh, cone here is actually connected with a, a black CA glue. You can easily leave us scratch scratch markings here. So it's a, it's black CA glue. Now the basket here is stabbed steel basket, of course, and it has a TT and a pistol logo also in here. Maybe I can get it on the image. Uh, well. You can barely see it, but it's there. The f uh, color of the frame is quite unique. It is like ruby red. It is uh, so red that it's almost violet. So it has a nice polished finished all around. So it's not a cheap basket by anyhow. It has f one, two, three, four, five, six poles. One, two, three, four, five, six poles. In the finished video, I think I said five poles. Oh my. So it's five poles, uh, six poles, sorry, and a basic stamp steel basket. Now the spider landing here is a quite, uh, it's not that wide uh, for the tops around here. So I think the spider in the subwoofer is meant to handle uh, the excursion. It, it is the one that um, stops the movement on the biggest excursion because the tops around it can easy, easily be like really, really big in big excursion. But the uh, three inch voice coil in here, which actually is a round copper voice coil and the small spiders down in here will be the affecting the X max or the X mech more like. We have a 10 millimeter top plate and around 10 millimeter back plate. Also back plate is only black. Uh, it has holes uh, around and on the center uh, and inside here we have a mesh a steel mesh inside here which actually is a good or a bad thing now it prevents uh, all the dust and metals stuff going into the voice coil but after like a uh, five to ten years maybe 10 to 15 years more like old subwoofers like uh, really old from 2000 or something now it's 2019 so about 20 year old subwoofers with these mesh they are all rusted so this will in finland actually we have the weather we have the worst weather uh because it's cold and it's it's damp and it's it's very hot in summer so it has some variations and steel will rust the iron here is, is will be uh, corrosive in some time so these meshes will be rusted in about like 15 years but hopefully the subwoofer can actually be around uh, 50 years from now uh, the magnet in here we have 40 millimeter magnet and it actually looks quite small to the frame but it was quite okay when I uh, tested the uh, maximum excursion of the subwoofer now let's check that video out uh, it is here and I tested it first with a just like a 3 cm uh, excursion with a 24 hertz 17 volts and 3.5 amps uh, to get get that small excursion going on that's like two centimeters or so now then i tried to stretch it and i found out one quite interesting thing about the subwoofer when you stretch it like a three to four centimeters everything is okay the amperage is okay the uh, movement is okay but if you want to stretch it above that line look at the amps 13 14 amps 
11 14.5 amps it goes up to th uh, everything is not in distortion it's only like 37 uh, volts or something like this but when you are when you are crossing the mark of around 4 centimeters excursion it starts to f um, drain a lot of amperage from this uh, amplifier so i'm not quite sure what it does it Ubi -dubi. let's shut this down so it's i'm not actually sure why it does it but a uh, maybe it's because the spider down in here starts to uh put a break on on the excursion and when you try to really go for it uh, the it will only heat up the coil so this uh, this subwoofer is meant to be played like low low and loud but with a quite um, medium range of excursion about four centimeters if you go beyond that uh, according to the driving in and the flex video excursion video it will heat up it's a three inch voice call rated at 500 watts so it, it should be okay uh, and the peak is around 1000 watts now let's check the parameters of the subwoofer i will be just changing here they are actually shown there so why am i measuring them again Here's the parameters. So the uh, cone area here is a little bit less than 31 centimeters, 30 centi 30.88 centimeters from center to center. Uh, the moving mass is around two, 300 grams. Vas is really high, about 76 liters, which tells me that this is a really good subwoofer for really big enclosures, like from a 120, 150 liters beyond like up to 200 liters or so one single uh, driver now the excursion will be uh, limited uh, because of the spider down in here but it will just uh, like to be in big enclosures if you put this in really small enclosure it will not sound good it will not work great in my opinion but you you div, uh, your experience might might vary we have a FS here of about 30.28 uh, coils in parallel mode 1.5 and I think one coil was around 2.6 ohms. QMS 5.22, QES 1.38, QTS 1.0. 9 so the parameters are a little bit different than the normal ones QMS is uh, a bit low it's okay but a bit lowish normally around 6 is okay and uh, QES QTS is a bit high uh, over one both of those so this is not a very um, how can you say this is not a the most efficient subwoofer there is around uh, we have a 83.7 uh, SPL one watt per one meter so it needs a lot of juice to go loud but uh, having that low FS actually the Russian web pages here if I show you them it actually says in your own pages that it has FS of 25.5 uh, and the VAS a bit higher and our SPL rating was around 20 uh, 85.5 so this means that the subwoofer is uh, really uh, meant to be with multiple subwoofers in very low tuned uh, enclosure it is uh, by far not a sound quality subwoofer a big 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 enclosure much of these uh, subwoofers will work really well for the lows okay so that's about it of the subwoofer it was Ural TT what do you think about my uh, decisions of the subwoofer what do you think about the maybe let's say the gluings the gluings are actually the best part of the subwoofer the next thing is beautiful frame uh, and the logo is the, maybe the biggest negative for me i don't really like to see pistols and violence on subwoofers extreme editions okay doomsday amplifier uh, maybe but pistols uh, straight in a, a subwoofer is not for my taste uh, does it work for you let me know in comment section so that was euro tt my opinion here is that it is okay subwoofer and meant to be played low 
so I will definitely recommend this for everybody who wants to make a really big encl enclosure with just a single or two or four of these uh, subwoofers and play only low nodes. It, mu it will handle that quite well with a low uh, power like uh, for you can actually put like from 600 watts up to 1000 watt RMS because the uh, box rise will help you out. Uh, in 4 order band pass, no, I don't see this subwoofer being okay in a 4 order band pass, but in normal ported boxes or 6 order band pass, this should be a okay driver. Now, thank you for watching. Life is life. Life is life. Is alive. Oh my god, what's happening to me? Like if you like, dislike if you dislike, and leave a comment. And we'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye!